welcome everyone to our podcast about the Leading Innovation Excellence Program, uh, which we offer from Erasmus Center for Entrepreneurship. My name is Ferdinand Jaspers. I'm academic director of the program, and today I'm talking to Angelique Plugger. Angelique, welcome. Thank um, you. You've been with us from the very start of our program, uh, and at the time you were the innovation driver at ING, and nowadays you run your own company. And you know you've uh, you've been with us from the start, and right now you're still a lecturer in the program. You help us to mature the program, and obviously you're also a coach in the program. So you have many different roles. And nowadays, also an entrepreneur of your own company, explore more. Uh, so just to get us going, can you tell us a little bit more about yourself and also what it's like for you to, to, to run a company and to be part of this program and what's in it for you? Yeah, so thank you for your question, Ferdinand. I think for me, uh, uh, what is really important is that uh, innovation and change has been part of my life uh, for a long time already in my previous job in, uh, in ING. Uh, and uh, uh, at some point I came to the realization that this is really my profession. Uh, and then, of course, if something is your profession, you really want to build and mature your own capabilities. So that's what I started doing. This was about I think, 10 years ago or so uh, when I really had this feeling, OK, this is what I want to be when I grow up, let's say. <laughs> and, uh, uh, and then, yeah, I started to, to really uh, build my own capabilities, build my knowledge. Uh, I went to the United States, uh, had a great uh, innovation education there. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, when I came back, and this was still when I was working in ING, we really wanted to build uh, innovation within the company at the time. Uh, and we were looking for something like that in Europe and we simply couldn't find it. Uh, and that's why I was so inspired uh, to start this program uh, together and really co-create it. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's been exciting ever since. Uh, and uh, what I love about it is that uh, I think if innovation is your profession and you're really serious about that, you want to keep learning. Uh, because I think it's very easy said that uh, it's a profession. But if you compare that to a lot of other professions like marketeer or financial uh, expert, uh, these are quite mature professions. But if you look at innovation, uh, this is not that mature yet. So there is an opportunity to grow uh, for yourself, but also for others and to really help others to become successful. And I think that is what I like about it, that I, yeah, I'm inspired by the program, by the content, and about my own learnings as well. Yeah, and, and I think about that, Angelique. So it's, it's wonderful to see the, the, the passion and, and the background that you have for, 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 this, for this topic. Uh, when it comes to, to learning and also your personal development and also what, what we bring to the participants, uh, what for you has been the most important learning or insight in the last couple of years uh, about innovation? Yeah, so I think uh, a lot of people, when they think about innovation, uh, it is something a bit fuzzy, uh, not so much structured, uh, creative. Uh, and I think what I learned is that, yes, it is a creative um, uh, profession, uh, but it is also uh, very much about structure and about creating a system. And I think the whole topic of systemic change, which is, which is a topic that we uh, discuss in the program and really is about the fact that it is a system, a organizational system that you can assess and mature. Uh, that was my most important insight. Uh, and I think also still today, if I look at the framework that we use in the ACA uh, uh, program uh, that we have, uh, uh, is around this structure that you zoom into different elements of your organization uh, uh, and with that, uh, realize a successful innovation system. And that is what I do with my own company, Explore More, when I help my customers, uh, but also what we educate and what's really driving uh, this program. So I think that's what I like about it. And um, about this topic of systemic change, uh, which we can elaborate on a little bit later on in this, in this conversation, but um, uh, one of the things you mentioned is that you also are, uh, act as a coach in our program, but also uh, throughout your, through your company, you act as a coach to people who are committed to developing the innovation competence of their organization. So can you tell a little bit more about your role as a coach in, in our program? Yeah, of course. Um, yeah, so the, um, within the program, we have one uh, element, uh, which is called the Personal Impact Project. Uh, and in that uh, project, uh, people come with a very specific 
uh, challenge that they have from their own organization. Uh, and sometimes they already have it at the start, uh, but also quite often uh, we help them with formulating that challenge uh, uh, by basically assessing the existing system, let's say the as-is of their uh, innovation structure, uh, but then also helping them uh, with a potential to be. And then of course, uh, uh, from that, uh, their personal challenge uh, is formulated and they uh, and what I like about it is that we also make it very uh, personal because yeah you know these or organizational changes they can be really big uh, uh, and uh, in the end it's also about your personal impact and how you can influence uh, your own organization or the effectiveness of the innovation within that organization uh, and that's what we do as coaches uh, and uh, what's nice about it is that it's really a combination of uh, um, a coach that people get from let's say the academic uh, background uh, and uh, a coach from practice like me uh, where you also then really can help people with your own experience uh, uh, and your own challenges that you had in, in former uh, situations, uh, building innovation. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think that really brings also a value to the participants to have that practical mm. um, aspect. And about those those challenges or the, the impact projects that, that participants uh, are defining throughout our program, uh, is there anything you can uh, you can share with us as, as an illustration or an example that the, that you typically see happening in, in organizations as they as they work towards maturing their organizations. Yeah, so there are so many different uh, examples. Um, I think one of them that I uh, see a lot in organization is the whole uh, topic of uh, uh, leading leaders. Uh, uh, what you uh, see quite often is that by now, most organizations, they have an innovation process or a way of working where they understand uh, uh, how to uh, bring innovations to life, let's say. Uh, usually those, uh, those innovation processes are based on design thinking or agile ways of working, lean startup, uh, uh, and they are some more mature than others, but applying that within their organization. Uh, and what you then hear quite often is that uh, there is, let's say, friction between innovation teams and uh, the leadership. And then what you hear quite often is our management doesn't understand us. And that's uh, um, from the perspective of those teams, very, very understandable. Uh, uh, but then uh, what you also need to learn is that as an innovation driver, you also need to help your leaders uh, in explaining to them their role and how they can uh, empower people and empower their organization actually to become more effective. Um, and a lot of leaders in organizations, uh, they need to, for a large part of their time, they need to run the core, as we call in innovation, uh, that is really sustaining the existing right. business. Uh, and innovation is something new and something different. And within the course of one day, they sometimes need to shift, uh, I don't know, two, three, four times uh, from leading the core uh, to uh, empowering people to explore. Right. Um, and I think that uh, is something that we talk about a lot in the program, uh, but also that uh, you see a lot uh, happening within organization uh, and also problems manifesting uh, around that topic uh, uh, and understanding that this is something that you can work on and also can right. help your leaders in their role uh, uh, is something very important, I think. Right. And uh, yeah, this comes also back to, to how we think about indeed innovation, innovation excellence as a competence, as a system consisting yeah. of those several components. And um, yeah, we can, we can dive into many of those different components, but at high level, we can distinguish, for instance, the processes that you need for innovation at certain levels, uh, but also the, the people, the people skills, the talent skills you need for innovation. And then also, uh, let's say there's a third high level element, the, the values or the culture for innovation. And, that of course goes hand in hand with leadership, which we just uh, touched upon. And uh, indeed in the program, that's, uh, that's an important element. And uh, it was also in, in your job as an innovation coach uh, throughout your, with your company, this is something that you work on quite a bit. So can you share with us a little bit more in detail, uh, some examples of how you work with leadership, how you bring about some change and some coaching to, to leaders? What are some, some roadblocks that, that you typically encounter or 
uh, anything else that that you that you typically see uh, when you work with those leaders? Yeah, uh, yeah. I think there's two things. Uh, there is the topic of culture. Uh, I think what's interesting there is that uh, to a lot of people, culture is quite vague as a topic. Uh, uh, but from uh, also from academic research, we know what are let's say innovation friendly culture descriptors. And by knowing that and understanding that, uh, you can also then help leaders uh, to recognize what needs to be changed in their organization. So to give you a couple of examples, uh, <clears throat> being afraid of failure or not being afraid of failure or seeing failure as learning um, instead of, of something negative per se is a very important one. Um, Another one that I think is really manifesting itself a lot <clears throat> is the, the value um, that is given to individuals in an organization and in, in to their personal purpose. Uh, so what you also see in, in, in innovation and actually in general a lot in organizations is that people are very much empowered uh, if they know what their contribution is to this bigger purpose that's uh, that's within the organization. And these are examples that, um, yeah, are basically, if you get it right, your culture becomes more uh, innovation friendly. Uh, uh, and also there you can really challenge and coach leaders in, yeah, you know, how to improve that. And then another thing, which is a bit more on the personal side, and I'd say the, the role of the leadership itself, uh, it's also uh, uh, just make it very practical and maybe one example uh, that we uh, have done quite a lot uh, in organizations um, is that uh, uh, is that in a innovation process, which is usually a very stage gated process, uh, uh, there is uh, most of the times a lot of work done uh, on the different, let's say, criteria for those stage gates. Uh, and what senior man managers quite often do is they look at the criteria and they basically uh, uh, start from there. Uh, but what's important is to also um, explain to them uh, what kind of questions uh, they can ask to empower people. Because usually an innovator um, is uh, always looking for ways to invalidate uh, his or her proposition, for instance. Um, not because they want to invalidate, but because they want to know if there is there something that I haven't thought about, for instance. So the whole way of how you ask or challenge teams is completely different compared to steering the core. Uh, and that's something that you can train and that you can practice. Right. Uh, um, and just make it very practical also for leaders to apply that in their own organization. Yeah, and I think uh, for us, this is also one of the, the main uh, themes, let's say, of the program as such that you do this, you know, as an experienced innovation professional yourself, and now as, as a trainer, as a coach, you you do this, uh, you know, uh, when you, when you get hired by companies to, to bring that about, and in our program, obviously, we, we train the participants to do that in their own organizations, exactly. and uh, in that sense, it's uh, that's why we call this a leading innovation excellence program, and I think uh, that for me is, uh, I think the 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 thing that we're passionate about, that I'm passionate about, is uh, empowering the participants to take up that, let's say, middle management or informal management or leadership role to to lead leaders, to influence leaders, but also others in the organization. And um, that's also very much a, a leadership competence, a leadership role. And um, yeah, then, then seeing indeed innovation as a profession, as a, as a competence, as a systemic approach, uh, that I guess is what we've seen happening, that it empowers people because they recognize that actually what they've been doing all along informally is actually what they're supposed to do. Exactly. And also that they see that others are doing that as well in other organizations and, and that there is a way to become better at that and that they are conscious and competent in, in doing that more and more. And um, uh, that's wonderful that, that we can do that together and um, yeah. that we make that impact on those people and their organizations. And um, yeah, uh, that, that I think is something to, um, uh, to really, really stress about wh what this program is all about. Um, but also we, we cover uh, some specific elements of innovation, obviously, of this, this, this very complex process. And uh, then if you talk about leadership, if you talk about vision, if you talk about proactive change and building the future of the company, then obviously it's also about 
coming up with ideas of filling the funnel and continuing to, to fill, fill the funnel, let's say. And it also means you need sometimes a long-term vision and also you need to make that tangible at the same time. So then you enter the topic of exploration activities or Horizon 3 activities, as we call it. And uh, that's also one of the uh, fields of expertise that you bring to, to the program, something that you do in your, with your own company as well. So could you elaborate a little bit on you know, how to do these kind of explorations, maybe also the leadership challenges with that and uh, how, you, how you integrate that into our program? Yeah, so that's one specific uh, topic that indeed we uh, we cover uh, in the program. Uh, uh, and um, I think also the reason why we added it, it at some point in the program is that, that you see that a lot of organizations struggle with this. Uh, so what you hear quite often is that they're innovating, let's say, for the sake of innovating without uh, exactly understanding the why. Uh, uh, and uh, and therefore also innovation is not always connected to the strategy. Uh, and that's really something that is important if you want to succeed in the end. Uh, because otherwise uh, those in innovation initiatives, they are loosely uh, uh, coupled, let's say, within the organization, but not so much linked to the overall strategy. Uh, so in exploration, typically uh, what we do um, is really uh, look at uh, uh, assessing a specific domain that is of interest uh, for the organization uh, and create what you call in innovation a contextual landscape. And what you do within a contextual landscape is you basically try to bring the full domain to life. So really, really researching all the trends that are relevant, uh, all the developments, of course, all the customer needs. And especially if you're talking Horizon 3, you're talking about underlying uh, needs that are not always manifesting uh, themselves that well. And bring that together. Uh, and that at some point uh, there is this, let's say, bigger picture uh, of a certain domain. Uh, and then if you have that picture, you can uh, look at uh, okay, uh, there are, let's say, some pockets that are interesting, also financially might be interesting to develop new business models. Uh, but then the question is, is there a fit with the organization itself? Uh, or maybe with the organization that you want to grow to, which is also a, po a possibility. Uh, uh, and that is, of course, uh, looking into, on the one hand, the core capabilities. So what is already in the organization uh, that you're good at and that you really distinguish yourself also from competitors and it's not hard to copy and things like that. Uh, and on the other hand, it's also very much about the strategic fit. So does it match uh, who you want to be as an organization? But also, is it, for instance, logical for the world around you that you move to that space? Uh, because everyone, you know, can can have this vision about moving somewhere, uh, but you also need to look at the uh, the possibility to stretch from where you are today to where you want to go. Uh, and that's, of course, a very strategic uh, question. That's also quite uh, often hard for um, management, especially if a uh, an organization is, for instance, uh, listed. Uh, because, of course, they need to keep their stakeholders happy as well. Uh, um, but there uh, are some, uh, and uh, that's, of course, going maybe a little bit too much in content, content but basically there are ways to assess uh, to uh, how to do that and how to that make those choices. So in the end, you can uh, yeah basically decide you know where to play, uh, but also how to win within a certain uh, area. Uh, and that's what we do within the program. There is a, one of the modules is, is very specifically around this topic where we focus on finding those opportunities and then also bring them to life. And in the end, going back to a very clear strategic narrative. So everyone around this organization or even within the organization understands the why. So I think that is... Yeah, some, some wonderful insights there. And I think uh, it, it, it nicely shows how we, how we covered many different a aspects of that change process towards innovation excellence. Uh, so we dive into certain sp very specific activities, namely, for instance, here, uh, the exploration activities, uh, but also very much uh, with a hands-on approach, helping participants, whatever their specific need is, to you know, through their impact project, to, to step it up. 
uh, all with an understanding of, of their context, uh, of also the influence of their behavior, how they phrase things, uh, how they influence their leaders or not. And um, yeah, that I think gives a nice flavor of what this program is all about. Thank you so much, Angelique, for, for sharing that uh, with us uh, today. And hopefully the, the, the viewers and the listeners have enjoyed this, this podcast. If you want to know more about the Leading Innovation Excellence Program, check out our website, ece.nl, and uh, hope to see you soon. Thank you. Thank you.